Hi, this is Lassie. Hope you're well and welcome to this video update on the mother of all bubbles. Yes, guys, I'm talking about the real estate market, the property market. And in this special video, I'm going to take a look at this chart for you and show you what this potentially means as well. Now, let me also mention that despite the fact that some of the things I'll mention in this video are related to the UK market. However, many of the things I'll mention in this video, you could also use them for other markets too. So, for example, if you're living in the US or Australia or other parts of Europe, it is possible some of the things I'll mention in this video could apply to you as well and could actually become useful for you. Now, here's the thing, guys. You may remember about a year ago, almost over a year ago now, I think it was, I put out a video that the mother of all bubbles, the real estate market was going to implode. It was going to essentially collapse. And in fact, one of the specific markets was the UK market, which actually, according to a study that was done uh, about a year or so ago, they found that the UK market was very likely a bubble that was going to explode. In fact, research from the University of Lancaster, in fact, showed this, that the UK housing bubble was going to burst. Now, here's the thing, guys. Last year, I put out a video where I warned that a recession was coming in the next 12 to 18 months. Here's a clip. Some economists from the London School of Economics are now predicting about a 40% fall in house prices. That's 40% fall from the highs that we had. And what that means is this. Whenever this line, whenever the spread goes over a certain threshold that is shown to you in black, and whenever this line becomes highly elevated, this means that the risk of a recession is also highly increased, highly elevated. So that's why you see here that the recession risk is the highest since 2007. And this model shows an almost guaranteed recession in a year. In other words, guys, we're probably no more than a year away or 12 months away from a major economic downturn or recession. So guys, as you heard there, the inverted yield curve was warning that a potential recession was on its way. Now here's something interesting. Last year, I went out doing some research on the property market in London. And I asked a number of estate agents, real estate agents in London, about what they thought about the property market. And most of them were bullish. I mean, a lot of the estate agents last year were still extremely bullish about the property market. Uh, they were still saying, no, this market's gonna grow. There's no bubble. Uh, the market's not gonna drop. All that fear was nonsense. So when I told them that I was not gonna buy a property because of the fact that a recession was very likely coming in the next 12 to 18 months because of an inverted yield curve, Guys, majority of these guys were laughing at me. They were just ridiculing me and saying, oh, you see this guy over here? He thinks a recession is going to come in the next 12 to 18 months. He's crazy. He's insane. Well, to all those realtors and estate agents, all I want to say now is who's laughing now? But look, putting all that aside, the fact is, guys, there are many estate agents, there are many realtors out there who are good people. I'm not saying they're all bad. I'm not saying they're all deluded, although many of them are. But I do think there are actually good real estate agents out there who are probably watching this video. And if you do find one, make sure you keep them because those estate agents can be your allies. They can be your friends. But it's also important to appreciate that estate agents and realtors are human beings too because they too can become part of the herd. And you have to remember one of the reasons why these guys are very bullish about the property market is because they have a vested interest in being bullish. If you think about it, their business of selling properties in real estate is about property markets not collapsing, about remaining stable and growing. So obviously, when there's information being given to them, like I did last year, that a recession is coming, that there's a warning of a potential collapse in the property market, of course, it's natural for them to dismiss that information as nonsense or false, because as human beings, our brains are programmed and wired to essentially fear any kind of information that could cause us pain. So you have to remember there's a biological element to this that we human beings tend to avoid any information that gives us pain. So here's the thing, guys. Um, I recently called a number of estate agents in London and I spoke with them and they tell me that, um, you know, that the London property market is still doing great. It's still doing fine. There's a surge in interest in properties. That actually seems to be true, by the way. So even though it may sound deluded and nonsensical, it seems there's some truth in it because during the lockdown, a lot of the people who wanted to buy or sell couldn't do it. So it's natural that when the lockdown eased and came to an end recently, um, again, a lot of people started, again, doing transactions and buying and selling with properties and calling estate agents. So that's true, I think. However, we should not fall into the trap to mistake that activity, that rise in activity, as house prices are going to go back up again. In fact, according to the Financial Times newspaper in London, here's what they're saying. By the way, guys, let me also mention some of the information I'll mention in this video could apply to other markets too, like the U.S., and also uh, Europe and Australia as well. So here's what they're saying in the Financial Times. So in this article, it says, UK house prices show first annual decline in eight years. So it says over here that prices for homes in the UK fell at 1.4% month on month. Uh, and in fact, if you take a look at this chart over here, guys, of the property market for the last 
uh, 10 or so years, you will see that it hasn't really dramatically changed that much since we peaked about a year or so ago. Um, so it hasn't fallen dramatically, but I think we're on our way to dropping further, as I'll, as I'll read to you in this article here. So over here in this article, it says that owners and buyers are now looking with caution toward what will be an uncertain year. An economist forecast a fall in prices in the medium term. Howard Archer, a chief economist, says he expected house prices to fall back about 5% over the next few months. And interestingly, he says the economic impact of coronavirus on already impaired consumer confidence would mean the upside to activity may be limited for some time to come. So that's not good news for the property market going forward. And again, I mentioned this before, I don't think the house prices as yet have dropped to a level or I would think that it's actually a pullback to the averages, a pullback to a mean average. I still think prices in London are relatively expensive and they haven't dropped to a level where I would think they're considered to be undervalued. I don't think it's happened yet. And over here, it says something interesting about the sentiment in the country. It says over here, the latest evidence from property website Zoopla shows the number of sales agreed is running 4% higher than before the COVID crisis. And it says sellers show little sign of pessimism with asking prices 7% higher than a year ago. So again, that's a warning sign from a contrarian perspective. You know, as a contrarian, you have to be thinking to yourself, well, if sellers are this much optimistic, this doesn't make any sense. So we need to see if there's more pessimism in the next few months. And again, I'm personally waiting for the sentiment to shift more pessimistic on the market before I even consider buying. And in fact, in this article, very interestingly, it gives a warning to buyers of property, real estate, just in case they see some kind of renewed interest in activity out there. And over here, it says something quite interesting. Apparently, uh, investors, investors abroad, foreign investors are also ditching and moving away from new build homes, especially flats with gyms and swimming pools. So it turns out because of the COVID crisis, because of the coronavirus uh, situation, uh, because it's becoming less safe to go to, you know, places where you might come into contact with other people like gyms or swimming pools. Um, therefore, a lot of uh, investors out there are avoiding buying properties like, again, like flats where there's a gym or pools in, in the property. Instead, guess what they're going for? I'll, I'll tell you this in a few minutes. Uh, but let me just I'll read you some more stuff over here. With London's priciest homes having lost more than 20% of their value since 2014, the speculators are gone. Now the process has reversed, with contracts often being reassigned for a loss. In fact, according to this article, a lot of buyers are actually getting out of the contracts at a loss because they're seeing too much risk in the property market. They just want to move out of this market. Another interesting thing in this article is the fact that mortgage lenders, uh, mortgage lenders are becoming more fearful about lending money, especially giving low deposit mortgages. For example, you may remember about a few years back, you could get 5% mortgage or you know, I guess you could put down a 10%, 5% mortgage and buy a property. Now, mortgage lenders are becoming much more strict and fearful about doing a 95% mortgage because, and it says over here, it says, banks and building societies have almost entirely departed from the segment of the market that lends out 95% of the property's value. And many are turning away those with a 10% deposit. And it says over here, a lender does not want to hold 95% of an asset if it looks likely to be worth less than 95% of its current value by the end of the year. So it seems that what's happening is a lot of lenders are seeing the same data we're seeing. Again, a very likely recession that could last some time. Again, mass layoffs, unemployments, bankruptcies. And these lenders are thinking, well, we don't want to take on so much risk giving a 95% mortgage to someone when there's a recession and when house prices could drop 4 or 5%. In fact, this article here is saying that we could well see house prices drop at 4% and a 16% drop in the index. And in fact, according to this chart over here, uh, there are expectations that house prices could drop yet again in the very near future. So here's the thing, guys. Uh, by the way, one more thing I wanna mention is this, according to what I've read here, is that uh, because investors are moving away from buying properties that have swing pools or gyms inside them, what is happening is that people are now looking for properties that have a garden access. Now that makes sense because of the COVID crisis and because of the lockdowns, many people think, well, if this happens again in the near future, I wanna have access to a garden so I can have some breathing space, so I can go and relax in the garden for a while. So that's actually interesting because it says to us that if we're looking to buy a property in the near future, having access to a garden, to a back garden, for example, could very well have impact on the price and the value of the property as well. And also guys, one thing I wanna mention here is this. Uh, if you're, for example, in the US, one particular chart I would look at is this, as you can see on that link right there, looking at the, uh, indeed, the property market index, which can be very interesting and helpful. If you are in the UK, it's worthwhile taking a look at the chart of Savills and Foxtons. Savills and Foxtons 
are the two biggest real estate agents in the UK. But the point is looking at the share price of these particular real estate stocks can be very helpful, especially Savills. Savills correctly predicted the crash in property prices back in 2007, as we can see here from this chart. And actually they bottomed out just about the time when property prices bottomed out as well, as you can see in this chart as well. So looking at the price action on Savills can give a good clue as to where we're heading in the property market as well. And by the way, if you live abroad, uh, for example, in other countries in Europe, Australia or America, I would suggest look at the stock price of your biggest real estate company in your country. Maybe that could give you a big clue as to where you're heading in your country as well. Right now, you can see Savills had a jump after the crash in March had a bit of a reversion to the mean, peaked about a thousand level mark and it dropped from there. Now it dropped quite heavily. In fact, here's the thing guys, I'm willing to bet that when the stock market eventually sees the major retracement, once the major stock market start the big retracement uh, to this rally so far, I think real estate markets, potentially this one here, Savills, probably could retest the lows in March. I don't think the major stock markets like the US markets could revisit the lows in March. I don't think that's likely. But I think weak stock markets, weak stocks like Savills here or Foxton's could very well drop to the lows in March once the bigger stock markets have that retracement, the major pullback in the next few months. So that could be quite interesting. And here's the thing, guys. I think that 1000 level mark on Savills is a very important level of resistance. If I see Savills going above that level the next few months, which I think is unlikely, I think it's rather less likely. But if it does happen, then I will have to change my mind and become more bullish about the housing market in the UK. Having said that, I don't expect that. I think it's quite unlikely, but it's something I'm watching, that resistance level on Savills. Personally, I think uh, we're going to see more turbulence and I think we're going to see more downside action potentially in Savills and most of the real estate market in the weeks and months to come. So we'll keep an eye on Savills and Foxons to see what happens in the real estate market and the, and the mother of all bubbles in the near future. All right, guys, hope this video helps and bye for now. Cheers.